welcome to my presentation on the effects of temperature on the photosphematarius dung beetle activity. Before I start, let me introduce myself. My name is Myra Cook, and I'm currently a senior at Chatham High School. I will be attending Randall Franklin College in the fall, where I intend to pursue a degree in anthropology with a specific interest in the archaeology field. I chose this topic because my family has a farm, and that means I have access to the dung beetles. And because the dung beetles help provide important nutrients to the soil. So I wanted to research if temperature could affect their ability to provide those nutrients, which could in turn affect the prosperity of my farm. I chose to use the Frodes femitarius dung beetle for my research because it is the most common dung beetle species on my family farm, which provided me with a large enough sample space to properly conduct my research. In order to gain a better understanding of my research, it is necessary to refer to previous research that has been conducted on dung beetles. To start off, a microclimate is essentially a small-scale climate. So when referring to beetles, they typically inhabit smaller areas which have their own microclimates. These microclimates have been the subject of numerous studies, such as the study done by Gardner et al., which stated that dung beetles typically are unable to function as well when exposed to high amounts of heat. Another study concluded that if dung beetles are exposed too suddenly to temperature changes, then they will be significantly more vulnerable than if they were given a chance to acclimate. Microclimate change can also indirectly affect the, the dung beetles if the microclimate changing causes habitat loss in the area, potentially resulting in the reduction of the local species. It is important to mention the factors that influence the distribution of different dung beetle species in order to understand the preferences of dung beetles. To start, the type of soil can affect the abundance of the species depending on their nesting style and habitat preference. Although it is generally concluded that dung beetles prefer moist, nutrient-rich soil, another study was conducted on whether or not dung beetles prefer specific elevations or temperatures, and it was found that they have no preferred elevation, however they do prefer warmer temperatures. Ecology is the study of the relations between individuals and each other along with their environment. Heat tolerance is a key relation between dung beetles and the environment they inhabit. For most dung beetles, it has been found that they have a high heat tolerance, but it is unknown whether or not they can tolerate colder temperatures. Another ecological study was based on humidity tolerance, which came to the conclusion that dung beetles were able to tolerate humidity changes. However, the specific effects may vary based on temperature. This brings me to my research question, which is, how does temperature affect dung beetle activity? After establishing my research question, I hypothesized that if dung beetles are exposed to cold temperatures, then they will become less active, whereas my null hypothesis would be that if dung beetles are exposed to cold temperatures, then their activity level will not change, which leads me to establishing my variables. My independent variables in the experiment are temperature and location which will affect my dependent variable of the activity of the beetles. My control group is the beetles that I have outside in the environment which they are typically exposed to. And my constants are the species of beetle, which is the Frodes vimitarius, the type of container the beetles are kept in, and when the manure in the container is replenished, and how often the manure is given to each container, and how much is given to each container. In order to effectively carry out my methodology, I had to prepare by gathering my beetles from the farm, then randomly divide them into three sets of containers. These containers were then randomly placed into one of three locations, outside, in my garage, or in my bathroom, in order to get a full spectrum of temperatures. After the prep work was completed, I was then able to proceed with my data collection. This consisted of checking the surface temperature of the box, followed by randomly selecting a beetle out of the box. After that, I placed a beetle on my measuring sheet and started a timer in order to measure the amount of time it took for the beetle to begin moving. Once the beetle started to move, I recorded the time and kept the time going until the beetle completely exited the measuring area. After, and then I recorded the final time. After I completed data collection, I then proceeded to compile the raw data and conduct my statistical analysis. The test that I used for my statistical analysis of my data was the two-way ANOVA. I chose to use this test because I wanted to find if there was a significance between the two variables of temperature and time. My statistical analysis revealed that there was a statistically significant difference between the data groups. 
the p-value was determined to be much lower than 0.05. This graph shows the possible correlations between the temperature, which is the blue rectangles, at the time of testing and the results in seconds of how long it took the dung beetles to start moving, which is the orange line, and then the time from that point on that it took them to exit the designated area of measurement, which is the green line. This particular set of data represents the group of beetles that were stationed in my garage. As you can see here, there seems to be no real correlation between the temperature and the times of the dung beetles' movement. This chart represents the group of beetles that was inside my house where they were exposed to the most stable environment. This allowed me to really evaluate whether the temperature affected the beetles' activity levels or if their activity levels just varied that much on a regular basis. Looking at this chart, there seems to be no real correlation between the temperature and activity levels. This chart represents the experimental group that was placed outside. As you can see, there's more variance in temperature, but still no real correlation between the temperature and the activity levels of the beetles. Each data value from my experiment was completely unique with no major trends. Based on my results of this, I have drawn the conclusion that my experiment did not reveal any correlations between temperature and dung beetles activity levels. However, I believe it did highlight a correlation between the start time and the end time, meaning that if a beetle took longer to start, that it would more than likely take longer to end. I determined the importance of my research to be the knowledge I gained from observing how the dung beetles behave when they are exposed to an environment that is unlike that of which they are typically exposed to. My research demonstrates a need for future research to determine what the real cause of variance in dung beetle activity is. This research should be constructed from alterations based on the most prominent limitations throughout my study. The limitations of my study included factors such as the time of year in which I collected my data, which caused me to not get as full of a spectrum of temperatures. In addition to limited temperature variability, I specifically chose to use one species of dung beetles in order to get an accurate representation of how the temperature could affect the rest of a specific group. However, only measuring one species does not allow me to make assumptions based on dung beetles as a whole. Finally, my last limitation was the amount of sunlight that the beetles had access to during testing. I kept my beetles in boxes, which had opaque lids that blocked out most of the natural light that could have reached the beetles. This could have possibly fatigued the beetles during testing, causing the data to be inaccurate. Carrying out this research project provided me with hands-on experience and knowledge on a topic which I was previously not familiar with. I was able to understand more about the behaviors of dung beetles, as well as the proper procedures that need to be followed in order to have adequate data. Not only did this project provide me with important information, but it provided me with a better understanding of the hard work and dedication that is necessary to effectively carry out a research project. I believe that these skills will help me be better prepared for my future endeavors in college. I would like to take this moment to thank some of the governor's school teachers, Ms. Long, who guided me throughout my research process, Ms. Gravitt, who helped me with my statistical analysis, and Ms. Dillon, who, who assisted me with the methodology portion of my research. I would also like to thank my parents for helping me structure my experiment, as well as gather my materials. Thank you. Are there any questions at this time? Yes. How, many, how long did your study last, and how many days did you um, conduct the study? So Ms. Bulliard asked if asked how long my study took as a whole, and it took about a month, I would say, maybe a few days shorter, but I just, I had to get a specific amount of data points, which was approximately 10, I believe, for each group, for each day that I took it, but I got a few extras, so it did go over the time that I had specifically planned to conduct my research, but that was just because I wanted to be sure. Do you think the age of the dung beetles may have impacted some of this data? So Dr. Mark Jones asked if the age of the dung beetles could have affected the data in any way, and yes, I do believe that the age of them could have affected the data. Although I did not have any fatalities during my testing, I believe that the older dung beetles could have started moving slower as I experimented, since I did have them for about a month, I feel like they could have gotten more worn out as it went on, causing times to be slower towards the later parts of my experiment. So yes, I do believe that the age could have had 
a significant event. Yes? The temperature variation in your study wasn't very great, and you acknowledged that mm -hmm. as part of the limitation of the study. Did you consider um, any actions um, to increase the variation in temperature, things like applying heaters or cooling or things like that to see more variation? So Mr. E's asked if I had considered any alternate ways of switching the temperature, such as a heater or something. And yes, I did consider it, but I felt like that would be manipulating it more than it already had been with two variables. And there were just a lot of different factors that went into the experiment and I didn't want to mess up any of the data that I could have already gotten. Okay. 